Now, in my last video, I talked about how I didn't like flat bottoms, but then because I have a newfound understanding of brewing coffee, that might have changed. So the problem I had was that flat bottoms are too shallow in bed depth, meaning if you were to pour too quickly or use a stream, your first drip comes out relatively weak. Now I solved this by suggesting that we can use a droplet pour. The droplet pour allows us to have a very strong first drip. Now, at, I, as I also noted in that video, that because there's a wider base and then there's a wider top, we're able to degas the coffee a little bit faster. Degassing the coffee allows us to get each particle of water to absorb the flavors at a faster rate, which means we can in theory brew a cup of coffee with less water than a V60 because of how quickly we're able to degas the coffee and then allow the water to fully absorb the flavors. So today I'm going to share with you guys a different way of brewing the coffee. This is my personal recipe for brewing a flat bottom uh, with a flat bottom dripper. Now I use the April today in the in in the video. Uh, it is one of my favorite drippers for flat bottoms. I only have two. It's that and, and a metal. Kalita. I don't like the metal Kalita. Let's talk about that another time. But we've all, we've got the the stag coming, and then we've also got the Oria V3 coming as well. So um, with the April, I like to use 20 grams of beans for all my coffees, just because this is my ideal brew size. Um, we're doing only 240 grams of water, and that's because we're able to do a bypass afterwards. Like I said, we can brew a stronger coffee, and then add water to dilute it. Uh, I'll be using a coffee that will be featured in my next month's uh, monthly subscription. It's a coffee from Papua New Guinea. It's a fairly unique coffee. It's got a nice nuttiness to it. And then a really nice kind of like fruity undertone. Um, but I haven't decided on its purpose or intent yet. So I haven't worked out a full recipe. I'm still kind of in the testing phase. Kind of stay tuned for that. If you guys didn't know, I also roast coffees. So check out my website for some of my coffees. Um, but Back to the, the recipe itself, 20 grams of beans, 240 grams of water. We're going to be pouring from a much higher spot today, as you'll see in the, in the demonstration. We're going to be pouring with droplets, very nice and slow. Uh, I started the timer a little bit early, but then you'll notice that the first drip of coffee actually comes out very late. We're able to actually get the first drip to come out as late as like, I think it was like 28 seconds. So. Um, being able to elongate the first drip allows us to have a first stronger drip, which allows us to have a stronger tasting coffee. So I'm actually very happy with the result we've got. We've got nice oils on it. Um, so yeah, watch the demonstration. I will also leave the full recipe in the comment section below and we'll get back to you.
as you guys can see at the end of the brew you're not going to notice that there's not a lot of uh, crema left at the top it started to dissipate i always talk about how i like to have the crema kind of disappearing at the same rate as the beans are sinking to the bottom this just shows that our coffees are fully extracted and we don't need to go any further um we've got a very good balanced coffee here where's my water guys i'll be right back all right i'm back guys now because um the coffee was brewed only with a 1 to 12 ratio. I find that personally a little bit strong. It's nighttime right now, especially right now. I am going to drink this coffee, but even for me, a 1 to 12 is a little bit stronger. So I am going to add a bit of hot water to it. Now, how much? I don't really know. Do I really care? Not really. Normally, when I drink from this cup, it's it's about halfway full. So we're going to leave it at that. Mmm. Sweet. A little acidity, um, the nuttiness comes out. This is exactly what I was expecting from this coffee. So for me to be able to hit that with this so-called dripper I don't like means I'm going to start liking this dripper. It was just how I thought about it that was wrong. Um, it's a very tasty coffee. It's got more body, arguably, than a V60. Maybe it's because of the strength of the coffee that I brewed out. Um, you can always see that it's a little bit murkier too. So without having to adapt like my heavy stirring technique on the v60 we're able to have similar richness in this coffee it's probably because i suspended all the grinds which left the bottom um, to be exposed to a lot of the oils which means the oils can pass through so once the grinds sink to the bottom it acts as a filter for all the oils um so for for the for the for the flat bottom we're going to have a lot more oils passing through even with less agitation. Now, the funny thing I noticed is it's because it's a wave filter. Um, if you pour actually along the edges, you might notice I didn't actually pour along the edges. I actually went between each of the waves to make sure I hit all the grinds. That's because if you do the lazy way and you go around the edges, you're actually going to get water um, pouring down the outside walls, which equates to having a weak brew. Not, not entirely, but the water is just a full bypass or full, fully channeled by now. So you don't want to do that. You can try what I do and just... Um, hit all the floating grinds that are between the waves. I wish they had filters that sat flat against the walls. I don't know. What do you guys think? Try it out. Let me know. Yeah. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe. Check out my website for my coffee beans. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.